Okay, so in today's session, I'm going to be uh, covering the chi-square distribution. And I'm going to begin by sharing my screen. So you can see the whiteboard. All right, there we are. Okay, so I'm going to illustrate it by using an example. And you can find this example in your textbook. Um, I believe it's on page 314. Let me just confirm. Yes, it's on page 314. And it is um, exercise six of your textbook. All right. So what you need to know for uh, chi-squared tests is that is it is basically an hypothesis test. There's three types of tests that a chi-squared distribution can be applied to. One of them is um, scan. Use my pen. Okay. The first one is it can be used for a test of independence. Okay, so like independence. Second one is that it can be used for a test of equal proportions. Okay. And then the last one is a goodness of fit test. And that's basically checking whether the distribution has changed or not. All right. So those are the three applications for a chi-squared uh, distribution. All right. So in this problem, uh, let's read through it. Okay. So it says a company recently conducted a study on motivation levels uh, amongst its clerical employees. The HR manager wishes to establish if there was any association between the gender of an employee and his or her level of motivation. And the team below has all the data that's needed. We have a message, let me just check. No, I don't think so. All right, so I'm back to my whiteboard. Okay. <clears throat> um, all right. So that's our data in this table that they give to us. Now I'm not going to answer A because um, that's not really a common question uh, in an exam. More often or not, you get question B. Uh, but I do encourage you to explore question A. But due to time constraints, I'm going to focus on question B, which is the hypothesis test. Okay. So we're only going to do this question here. It says conduct a chi-squared hypothesis test to identify statistically whether there is an association between employees, gender, and motivation level, and use an alpha of 0 0.1. All right. Now, what you're trying to see is basically, does being of a specific gender mean that you have a different motivational level? For instance, are females more highly motivated than males, uh, or is it just independent or random? So what you're doing is you're doing a test of independence, or in other words, a test of association. It's the same thing. All right, so I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to start answering question B. All right, and as with hypothesis tests, we follow the same steps. Uh, and if you're not unfamiliar with that, please refer to my last video, uh, where I cover hypothesis testing and the different steps that's needed to, uh, to answer those questions. All right, so first step. Step one is we declare how now an alternative hypothesis. So we start here. We'll start here. This is for step one. You're going to declare H naught and H one. Okay, so I'm going to use text here so I can write it up because with hypothesis testing, especially for the test of independence, you need to write it up in words. So your H naught will be um, here is that there is no association, or in other words, uh, there is independence. So in other words, for this problem, we're talking about gender and motivational level. So we'll say gender and motivational or motivation levels are independent. Okay. Or you can write, there is no association between gender and motivation levels. It's the same thing, right? And then H1 will just be the opposite of that. Okay, so H1 will be, uh, there is an association. There 
is an association between gender and motivation levels. Okay, so it's just the opposite of that. But just remember that H naught will always be stating that there is independence. Okay, all right. So that's your um, step one done. Okay, declaring your null and 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 alternative hypothesis. Now, one thing you should know is that a chi-square test is always an upper tail test. In other words, your rejection region is on the far right. Okay, so that's step one. Let's do step two. Step two is to find the rejection region. Okay, so I'm going to get to my marker. Okay, All right. Now we're going to go to step two, and we're going to uh, find the rejection region. Now, with a chi-square test, like I said, it's always an upper tail test. In other words, here's your chi-squared graph, distribution graph. It's wait, oh my color. I'm doing it too symmetric. I want it to be skewed. In other words, like this. The bell or the peak should be more on the left, and then the there's a tail that drags on the right like this. Okay. And like I said, it's an upper tail test, so the rejection region will always be on the uh, top or far right side. Now the trick is we need to find out what this value is, our critical value. Now they tell us what our alpha is, our alpha is 0 0.1. So the entire 0 0.1 goes here, all right? Now to find the rejection region for a chi-squared test, you need to work out the degrees of freedom, all right? Now the formula for the degrees of freedom when you're doing a test of independence is this here. It's df equals to r minus one into c minus one. Now. R and C is basically the rows and the columns that you have in your table. Now, if you look at the number of rows that you have, you can only have a row for male and female. So there's two rows. So in other words, your R is two. Okay, so we're gonna put two in place of R. For your column, there's three levels of motivation. There's high, moderate, and low. So there's three columns. So your C is three. Okay, and if you work that out, you'll get a value of two. That's your degrees of freedom. Okay, now that you got your degrees of freedom, right, what you're gonna do is <clears throat> you're gonna go to your table, uh, which is given to you, right? Your chi-square distribution table. So if I'll show it to you here. This is, you can find this in your textbook, your table three or in your formula sheet, and you have to refer to this graph. Now here, you just gotta match what you have in the question. Your alpha or your level of significance is 0 0.1, so that's your column. So that's the first column, right? 0 0.1, and your degrees of freedom, as we worked out earlier, it's four. It's two. You have two degrees of freedom. So where that 0.1 and the two intersect, that's your critical value. It's 4.605. That's your critical value. Okay. So we know that our critical value here, and I'm gonna. Uh, Gonna write it out like this your chi squared critical value is equal to 4.605. The only way you can work this or get it from the table is you have to get your degrees of freedom and you must know your alpha and you just see where they intersect in the table and that's your critical value. Okay, so if I, I'm gonna <clears throat> remove this part here because I want to sketch out my rejection region and my acceptance region here on the graph. Okay, so remember what we said, this is the critical value, 4.605, and as we said, that it's an upper tail test, so everything on the right of this 4.605, we reject H0, and everything on the left, we accept H0. Okay, and that is your step two done. So this is step two. Let's move on to step three. Now step three is where a lot of work and calculation will take place, all right? And you'll get the bulk of your marks for this question in step three. All right, now to do step three, what you need to do is you need to get your column totals and your row totals. And what I mean by that is, if you look at this table that's given to us here, all right, we have, uh, eight males that are highly motivated, eight males that are moderately motivated, and 14 that are 
they have a low level of motivation. So in total, the number of males is eight plus eight plus 14, right? And that'll give us 30. And this is why I have this table here on the right. Is because I just have the totals for the columns and the rows, all right? So there's, there we have 30 males shown in this part here. And then if you add up all the females, it's 19 plus 12 plus nine, which gives you 40. And then we need to add up everyone that's highly motivated. So if you look at this table here, we have eight people that are highly motivated that are males and 19 that are female. So in total, we have eight plus nine, 19, which is 27. So we have 27 highly motivated people. And we need to do the same thing for moderate and for low. So in other words, you need to get the totals here. Okay. Now we need those totals uh, because they're gonna come in handy for step three. All right, so what we need to do for step three first is we need to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paste this table here and I'm gonna explain how to get the values uh, that's needed in it. All right, so if you give me a second. All right, there we go. I'm going to explain how to how this table works and how to get the values in it. All right, so let's look at the first column. The first column, all we're doing is we're saying uh, this is our row variable that which is gender. We have male and female. The next column is the uh, column variable. So in other words. We can have eight males that are highly motivated, all right? We can have eight males that are moderately motivated, and then we have 14 males that, are, that have low level of motivation. So the first three columns is you're not really working on anything. All you're doing is you're rearranging this table here. You're just rearranging it into this format here, okay? You put all your males together, all the females together, and you put the, the, the column variable next. Okay, so you have high, moderate, low for male, and you have high, moderate, low for female. And all I do is I get the values from the table and I just put it there in the corresponding value. Okay, so for instance, for females and high, let's look at this table here. We have this female, okay, and there's high. So where it intersects is 19. So we write 19 for females that are highly motivated and, and so on. You do that for the rest of the other rows. The next column is where there's a calculation that's needed. And I want you to pay attention for this one here, okay? For the expected frequency, and the symbol for the expected frequency is Fe. Sometimes you have Fe written here. The first column is F0, which is your observed frequency. To work out the expected frequency, it's your row total. So I'm just gonna write R for row, row total times your column total, which I'm just going to write a C, over your grand total. I'll explain this in a second. It's actually very, very easy. All right, so let's look at the first value we're going to work out here. I'm going to show you how we actually got this, 11.57. The first row represents males that are highly motivated. So we're looking at the males that are highly motivated. <coughs> we're here. Okay, high and male. So what you need to do is, as we're gonna use this formula here, okay, right now I'm just gonna look at this table and see it's the same thing. Okay, I just rearrange it, but this table has the totals. And this is why I told you the totals need to be worked out. So we're on male and high. Now the row total for male is basically just going across the columns. So everyone that's male, that's your row total. Row total is the total of males, so it's 30. So this R total is 30, okay, times the column total. Remember, we're looking at male and high. Column total is the total going down this way. And that's the eight plus 19. So it's here, it's the 27, okay? So that's your column total. So <clears throat> that's 27. So that's your column total. And then the grand total is adding up everything in this table. So if you look at this table here, if you add up all the values, you get a total of 70, right? That's your grand total. So your grand total is 70. And if you work this out, you'll get a value of 11.57. And that's how we get this value here. 
Okay, that's how you do it. You use this formula here to get it. Let's do another value, right? Just so you make sure that you understand this. Let's look at females that have a moderate level of motivation. So we're here. Okay, now I'm going to show you how we got the 11.43, right? Now we're looking at females and moderate. So we're I'm going to go to this table. We've got total. So we're here, okay? Where we have the 12. Okay, we're here. Now we need to get the row total. So that's basically adding up all the females. So that's 40, 40 times the column total. Now we're here on moderate. We have a total of 20 for moderate. We divide by the grand total, which is 70. <clears throat> and if you work this out, you get a value of 11.43. And that's how we get it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, okay, so that's pretty much how you work at this entire column. You can do it for all the other values. I just showed you two as an example, but the method applies for all the other row values. Okay, so I encourage you to go and work it out and check that your values correspond with this, with what's in the table. All right, do that as an exercise, please. All right, so now that's this column done, okay, the FE. The next two columns are actually very easy because they actually have the formula uh, as the heading there. What you need to work on is your, your observed frequency, your F0, minus your FE, and then just square it. So basically, you've got your F0 column here, and you've got your FE column. So it's telling you, take the value for F0 and subtract it from FE. So if you look at the first uh, row, your F0 is 8, and your FE is 11.57. So we're going to write 8 minus 11.57. Five seven, okay, and we're going to square it. And if you do that, so raise to the power two. If you do that, you're going to get a value of um, twelve point seven six. Okay, very very simple. You do that for every single row going down. So for the last one, right? How you got the seventeen point one six here is you took nine, subtract thirteen point one four. And then you raise it to the power of 2 and you get the 17.16. Right. So that's how you work at this column. Okay. Please try that and uh, check that you gain the same values here. So remember here, once you do this, this is how you get the first value 12.76, which is this value. Okay. We're doing it for the first row. And you continue doing it for the other rows. Now, the last column is what you do is, I'm going to just Get some space on this board. You know, it's a lot of work, but you actually get marked for this. So that's why I did say step three uh, is a lot of marks. So please do get the hang of it. Okay, so let's go back. Last column now. All it's telling you to do is take the column before value and divide it by FE. Because if you look at the heading of the last column, it's F0 minus FE all squared. And doesn't it look like this here, what we just worked out? Okay, that's the column before. But it's telling you take the value from the column before and just divide it by FE. That's all it's telling you to do. So for instance, for the first row right here, the value that we got for the numerator is 12.76. So all we do is we say 12.76 and we divide it by FE. And what is the FE value for this row? Well, it's 11.57. Okay, so we divide by 11, 11.57, and you'll get a value of 1.102. That's how we get this last value here, the last column. That's 1.102. So that's what you do for the entire um, last column. You take uh, the value in this column here, which I'm gonna arrow, and you divide it by the value in this column, your FE. That's all you do. So for the last value, for instance, how you got this 1.306 is you took 17.16 and you divide it by 13.14, and that's how you get the 1.306. Okay, so you need to get this last column. Okay, and now the final step for step three is you add up all the values in the last column. 
Okay, if you add up all these values, so 1.102 plus 0.038 plus all the way to 1.306, if you add them all up, you'll get a total here, 5.043. Okay, if you add up all these values in the last column, you get a value of 5.043. And this value is very important because it's gonna tell you whether you're in the rejection region or not. Now this 5.043 is, is the value that you're gonna check in step two where it lies. Now 5.043, you can see it's greater than 4.6, so it's on the right. So that means it's in the rejection region. Okay, so that means we're gonna reject H0. So step four, step four, after looking at the value we got in step three, we can see that we reject H0. Okay, because it's this value here lies in the rejection region, this 5.043. All right, and then the last step is concluding with a statement. So just like in the previous video for in this um, hypothesis testing, we'll write a statement. I'm gonna clear, uh, I'm gonna, yeah, let me make some space. Okay, the statement generally takes, it'll give you about two marks. So please practice doing that. Okay. It's actually pretty easy because the way you state your hypothesis actually tells you how to write it. So for instance, if we look at what we wrote for H0, H1, and remember we said from step four, we're rejecting H0. That means we agreeing with H1. Right, we're agreeing with H1. So we're saying that there is there is an association between gender and motivation levels. So all you need to do is you always need to include your level of significance. So in your step five, your conclusion, right, you're gonna say based based on a 10% because that's what your alpha was of significance. I'll make this a bit larger so you can follow what I'm writing. Based on the Timpson level of significance, uh, <clears throat> we find that there is an association between gender and motivation levels. Motivation levels. And that's your conclusion. That's how you answer this question. Okay. All right, um, and that's hypothesis testing. And this is how you apply it for a test of independence. All right, um, please work through this problem. It's in your textbook and you have this video and the workings to check uh, your workings against. I encourage you to do that and please try that out. Um, I hope this helps and wishing you all the best.